Hello and welcome to Differential Discussions. I'm Melissa. And I'm Dave. And today we have something pretty exciting to look at. I got really excited when I was looking at the slide. I texted Dave and I was like, oh my God. <laughs> no, this is really special. I, I mean, um, you know, uh, organisms in peripheral blood, somewhat rare, right? I mean, you really don't see that very often. Um, so yeah, so we're looking at a peripheral blood film today. Uh, excuse the area, but it's significant enough for us to stop here and, and kind of reflect on this. So what are we seeing, Melissa? What's going on here? Yeah, so this cell here, and we're seeing these little fungal elements inside of the cell. So this is histoplasma organisms. So cool. Inside of the cell. Yeah. So so we had to do our, a little research ourselves, being uh, not necessarily native <laughs> microbiologists. And uh, so, yeah, histoplasma is a uh, fungal uh, element that uh, individuals can breathe in, can cause a respiratory infection, um, but really only impacts immunocompromised patients most of the time. So um, for it to make it to this individual's peripheral blood uh, has to be pretty severe. And I imagine that they're quite immunocompromised to get to this point. But Wow, what a delight to look at the slide. Um, even yeah, though and, and, and Dave and I purposely stopped on this cell just because we're going to peruse the slide, but we might not see something this amazing again. It's kind of, you really have to scan and look around the slide to see it. So we'll see what else we find, but we definitely wanted to point this intracellular fungal specimen. So usually these guys are found intracellularly. Rarely they're extracellularly. I've seen them in body fluids before, never really in a peripheral blood until the specimen. So yeah, it's really neat. And <clears throat> yeah, and I, I try to tell students to not like, um, you know, uh, to try to be as objective as possible. But if you see a strange finding, like go to it, focus on it. It is very important that something like this gets reported. Yeah, absolutely. All right, All right let me let me move around a little bit. Sure. So we're we're in one of the like the the lines, if you will, of the feathered edge. So I'm gonna go back into try to go find a, a, a better area. But if we see other interesting oh look at that guy right there. Wow. So even the granulocytes now, huh? Yep. Right um, there. Um, um. And then would you say even in the, the large vacuole underneath that is something just, just degenerative at the very least? Uh can't tell if that's <clears throat> that or just a platelet. Yeah. So, uh, you know, hey, it's not uncommon for our, like cross-reacting uh, immune system kind of functions to happen and things like this. The other thing I want to notice too, note too, is the neutrophils look like they've been through war, right? This is like the um, uh, prototypical kind of, I don't know, infection, right? So I'd say generically, maybe a bacterial infection in this case, not so, but you can tell by looking at these neutrophils that there's something going on. Yeah. And nucleated red blood cell making an appearance. Couple of them. <gasps> oh, this slide is freaking awesome. <laughs> very nice. So, um, yeah. Wow. Beautiful pro pro myelocyte. Oh my Why are we seeing a pro myelocyte in a histoplasma? Yeah. yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. So I think um we always look at our granulocytes, our neutrophilic lineage as the bacterial uh responders. And that's that's quite true. When you have an infection and it's just like stress on the body, you get this release of these uh, uh the of this left shift, so to speak. Um with for a pro to make it in the the peripheral blood, it's gonna be pre pretty intense, right? I mean, we see left shifts all the time that don't go. Uh, as early as the pro but yeah i just anticipate it's just because of the body's um uh fulminant reaction to this insult yeah beautiful cells though <clears throat> and i think these these neutrophils here just kind of show again that they're beat up and mm -hmm. we're going Some away vacuization vacuoles toxic gran you can see that there's a bunch of them that have been smudged and yep yep, yep. yeah a lot of smudge cells yeah and, and forgive us for the area i don't think we're going to find a really good area in this blood film just given the circumstances um, yeah. 
Wow. A normal lymph. <laughs> Reactive lymph, right? Yeah, he looks normal, this one. Yeah. There are other ones. We'll, we'll find them. An RBC. Oof. <laughs> Getting some weird, uh, weird nucleus shapes out of this. Yeah, I think Looks he's like a lymph. A, yeah, I think so too. Yeah. He's got the lymph chromatin pattern. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, some kind of an immature gran. Yep. Um, staging these is a little tricky, uh, but you know, what, Milo? Yeah, it's either a Milo or a Meta. Yeah. One of the two. It... Yeah. I'm debating. I think it might be more meta just because I think there's some toxic granulation in there. That's fair. A lot of echinocytes. You get a lot of burr cells. Yep. Oh my gosh. <laughs> like a band? <laughs> band. <laughs> we want to ban the bands. But like, eh, I'd give it to you. <laughs> this one, this one's not a bad looking band, right. though. If we're gonna yeah, call right. a band, yeah. Wow, beautiful, amazing, yeah. So, um, don't be alarmed by the nucleoli. This is just a highly reactive uh, lymphocyte. So, um, how can we differentiate it from a blast, though? Yeah, so that it, that can actually be quite tricky, even for competent morphologists. I think um, this is a little bit of a cop out, but given the circumstances surrounding this, the fact that I've established that there's an infection, I mean, it, you know, you get reactive, uh, um, reactive uh, features, and you know, lymphocytes uh, proliferate, right? They they so you're going to have kind of blast like features. But um, overall, I see one prominent nucleoli, maybe, uh, well, there's a there's multiple nucleoli. Usually the number of nucleoli is like a thing. Yeah. It looks like there's another one here. Yeah, and they may be a remnant or something, right? Um, so there's a lot of activity there. But the um, when I follow the contour of the nucleus, nothing like really screaming out at me. Um, and then I look at the cytoplasm, that deep basophilia, and then the 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 lighter color towards the nucleus. Uh, this, uh, you know, it's telling me reactive in that regard. Whereas a blast would be more uniformly blue in the cytoplasm. It's um, a, it's also a different shade of blue. Yes, the black agreed. blue, that basophilia versus the reactive basophilia are different shades of blue. The mm -hmm. other thing that I think is the chromatin of the nucleus mm -hmm. is not blasty. It's not soft. It's not quite like plasma cell sort of reactive, but it, it definitely is more clumpy than a blast would be. Good point. I, I, I really should have focused on that because even around that prominent nucleoli, there's a nice dark portion yeah. of uh, chromatin in there. Yeah, that's a good point. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see what else. More NRBCs and beautiful neutrophils. neutrophils. This one's a really nice toxically granulated one with vacuole. Yep. Yep. So, you know, the big signs of, of reactivity are the toxic gran and dole bodies and vacuoles. We don't have dole bodies, but you have a lot of toxic granulation and vacuoles. Mm -hmm. Yep. And we have evidence of like uh, less mature granulocytes, right? So this all kind of feeds into the narrative. <clears throat> yeah. Cool. Some NRBCs and a lymph just hanging out. Wow. <laughs> the reactive lymph on the left there, really beat up looking. It might be smudging. What do you think? Like it, the the integrity of the cell might be compromised. I agree. Yeah. And there's a fair amount of smudges following that comment, right? Like that was a <laughs> bunch of smudge cells. <laughs> and not uncommon to have smudge cells on a, in a reactive picture. I think the other thing too is they are mostly neutrophilic smudges. True. Which is what you expect when you're looking at an infectious 
process. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Jeez, what do you suppose about that one, Melissa? Weird... Take a pass. So, and... I think we're debating if it's a mono or if yeah. it's a lens here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so here's the thing is like monocytes can become active reactive too, right? Like, I mean, they they serve an immune function, and this is an extreme circumstance. Um so I'm I kind think... of yeah, I think the chromatin is telling me more mono. Same. Yeah, that's what I want to go with that too. Um, yeah, I feel I feel more mono on this one. Uh, but yeah, definitely some characteristics that one might think of a reactive lymph. But um, let's go this way a little bit deeper. Hello. Should I raise the light? Sorry. No, yeah, yeah. No, that's you're good. Um, so yeah, some kind of granulocyte. I'm just trying to stage it, right? And this is where um uh I would probably go for Milo. Yeah, same. I was gonna say I think it's transitioning to Milo at this point, but I don't really see a nice nuclei. Yeah. That's what I was looking for. Mm. Mm-hmm. Lymph, mono, and some neutrophils. No, I'm going to go a little bit deeper because yeah. there's some good stuff in here. Good I stuff. Think it's deeper. Wow. Is that a basil <laughs> at the top? It looks like the granules are basal. Yeah. Granules. Man, it gets hard though, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, I think when, so. When yeah. one's neutrophils are sufficiently like beat up, they um, blurs the line a bit. And so the reason why we picked out basal, I think, is more because of the size of the granules. Because toxic granules, even when they're present, like this patient has, they're still smaller in comparison to the basal granules. And so these granules are significantly larger. Yes. And some of these neutrophils have a ton of vacuoles in it. And I always pause because I'm always like, is there histoplasma in there? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So so we must be sensitive that some organisms might not stain particularly well, which is characteristic somewhat of histo. So, um, yeah, we want to be careful not to miss anything. <clears throat> what a treat this slide is though Ooh, can you go up there was a smudge yeah oh Stop. look at that Edge. how cool so this looks like i don't know what the origin cell was maybe we presume it's been a monocyte because monocytes have been phagocytizing the organism but it looks like it ruptured and then we're left with a couple of histo elements just hanging out yeah how cool Good catch. <laughs> thanks <clears throat> yeah mad lymph Urgh. yeah i'm i'm like and this one has some nucleoli or nucleoli remnant looking things in there but it's also really really clumpy yeah really clumpy yep 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 oof that looks rough and then next to it is like maybe like a mono Ooh. i don't know if it's a mono or a limb yeah geez i think i would go with a mono yeah that's it's a, a that's a tough call though yeah that one's a tough one that was a coin flip yeah. <laughs> wow. Now I'm going to look at all the smudgies. I know. <laughs> yeah, I think we got a little lucky there. Yeah, I think so. Wow. This is a really nice reactive one. Let's bring it in a little bit more. Look at that reactive. This wow. one almost looks like an NRBC. 
I know that's the thing that I was actually struggling with. Is I'm like, oh geez, is this an NRBC? Um, super deeply basophilic. Yeah, and it's like quite smooth. I'm struggling with this one, Melissa. But I think the shape of the nucleus is the tell yeah. that it's a lymph. Yeah, because you're uh, right. The cytoplasm is really, really smooth in this one. It's not quite as textured as we'd expect, but the shape. Yeah, the nucleus. It's hard to get around that. So nucleated red cells usually have very round nuclei like yeah. um and there's a little bit of yeah <laughs> this is the slide that keeps on giving huh oh look another basil Woo! yeah that went a little easier easier call and i'm playing with the fine tune because there's also granules on top of the nucleus like yep. you can see them here this nice right. one there a couple over here which is another key characteristic of our bezos right if if you can visualize that yeah it's just tricky because the the neutrophils are so beat up yeah but the basos are looking more neutrophilly mm -hmm. the slide is just too cool i know i <laughs> how neat so NRBC there, that's what I'm thinking. What do you think? Yeah, and really, really, really round nucleus like we were mentioning. Yep, yep, yep. Wow. And I know I'm in a little bit thicker on this slide. Yep. right now yep. um but before like dave was saying there's not a gray area yep. for reviewing these cells but also when you're looking at this slide i just happened to notice when i was viewing this slide that the the histoplasma and a lot of the reactive lymphs the nrbc's things like that you were seeing them more either towards the feathered edge or towards the thicker part of the slide mm -hmm. and so that's why Dave and I are focusing on these areas because I happened to notice that as I was perusing the slide. Mm -hmm. Wow, really reactive lymph. Yeah, yeah and, and I think when you're trying to observe for um, rare but important findings like this, some of those rules about area really just don't matter as much. Um, when qualitatively we're trying to assess if there's an organism present, uh, I kind of encourage you to go off the beaten path a little bit. Um, for red cell morph and platelet estimates, things of that nature, you have to be much more strict about area. But for differentials, as long as the cell is giving you adequate information, uh, you know, when you get really, really thick, the, the cells are difficult to distinguish. But yeah. another immature gran? Yep. Yeah, I think it's another um, myelo. Mm -hmm. Bunch more NRBCs here. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> hey, beautiful. Really cool. So some kind of division going on, or uh... it's either uh, I don't. It doesn't look like it's going through mitosis, so it, it could just be a binucleated. Yeah, just two nuclei. Yep. Mm -hmm. So a nice pleomorphic mono. Mono, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Pro yep. Milo, yep. I, I agree. There's a really nice the nuclei. nucleoli, yeah. Cool. thicker so yeah we've seen a few organisms um but i i could imagine someone speeding through this slide and uh and missing stuff so um oh definitely so especially just a... if you're not scanning yeah mm -hmm. when i scanned to the feathered edge that's when i was like oh okay 
-hmm. That's when I found that big giant cell that we first originally were looking at with multiple organisms present in it. And That's... I think so, we just have to be careful too because these are still just platelets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. These are not organisms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, speed, um, you know, being expedient and getting the diff out quick is important, but sometimes try to listen to those um, those voices. Sometimes you have to slow down and, and be careful. A um, couple yeah. of the four grands over here yeah. again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, even these young cells just look terrible, right? Like, uh, been through war. Yeah, they look, I think they're myelos, but... yeah really not cute yeah <laughs> really not cute not cute milos i was hoping to find another organism huge platelet yeah. giant platelet i'd say there's also some polychromasia in this slide certainly yeah mm -hmm. and i think there's enough polychrome to call yeah, which is actually kind of rare. Is polychrome is probably one of the most overcalled. Yeah. Um, nice NRBC over here. Beautiful. And actually, uh, these guys over here. So look, look how nicely vacuolated they are. They're so vacuolated. It's like they give me pause. Like, are is there histoplasma in there? Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Oof. Messed up lymph. Yep. <laughs> Another myelo looking type of cell. <laughs> These cells are really tricky to discern exactly what to call them. I was looking for another histo, but I don't see any. But this is another nice. This one looks like another reactive limb. Mm -hmm. Yep. Agreed. Ooh. Wow. Beautiful. So this is like, I love the, the coloration, that reactive limbs, like cytoplasm color. I wish I could just like, I don't know. Yeah. That's well, that's perfect because, like, you perfect. can see the dark blue here, and then you can see how it gradients in towards a, a lighter color. This is what we've been saying. This is like a perfect specimen of gradient. Yep. Yeah. I I wish I just had a picture of that, like, in my wallet, and I could just be like, "Look at this." Because <laughs> you like in the moment you want to like describe it, and it's uh, you know, it's beautiful. Yeah. Well, I think this slide was great because it showed histoplasma, which is really cool. But it also showed like the infectious process where you could see the toxic granulation, the vacuoles, the really beat up neutrophils, mm -hmm. and also the really reactive lymphocytes in addition to that. Yeah, it's just so many angles to learn from this one, right? And a uh, great example of reactive uh, immune processes, but... Um, and it was a real good opportunity for us to learn, right? Because, I mean, we don't know a ton about uh, histo, um, you know, being hematologists. But <laughs> it was yeah. fun. Absolutely. And I think that's all. So thanks for watching. Yeah, thanks for your time. Please like, subscribe, and hit the bell if you'd like notifications whenever we post a new video. And feel free to reach out to us on social media or via email with comments or suggestions about future content. Thanks.